What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is The Flash, Season 3, Episode 5, Monster. Why such a vague title, you ask? Because who's the real monster? I've, I've seen this done before. I've seen a lot of these storylines done before, and some of them in this show. First of all, you've got Harrison Wells, the new Harrison Wells, trying to get, get integrated into the team. We find out he's lying about something, only to find out he's not lying about really being good. He's a good guy, but as it turns out, he's not the genius that we originally hoped he was going to be, which was kind of obvious as they started talking more. It felt like he just he kept pretty much saying everything that they were saying. And aside from one time whenever he told you know, Cisco to use his ears, that was the only time that I was like, oh, maybe he actually is smart. But then Cisco had to come up with the idea, so we come to find out that's pretty much what he's done his entire life, is just spit out ideas, and then the smart people around him are the ones that use some of those ideas, you know, he just spouts nonsense sometimes, they're just like, oh, that one actually can work. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe as the season progresses, we can see just how useful that can be for the team. You know, because sometimes it does just kind of take, oh, that idea, I'm going to take that and actually apply it. So he could actually be helped to the team, and it's actually it's, it's an interesting dynamic that we haven't really seen before to the team. So even though I've seen that storyline done before with you know, <laughs> everything that happened beforehand, I, and I like where they're going with the new story with this new Harrison Wells that isn't a genius, he's just an idea guy. It's a new dynamic that we haven't really seen on this team before. Most of the time, they just <laughs> they happen to be doing something, and all of a sudden that ties into what they were doing earlier. It's like, oh, the way that I hold this coffee mug, that gives me an idea. <laughs> it's like, what? So this could actually provide a more useful scenario in which he keeps spouting these ideas, and then one of them clicks. It's like that one. I'm gonna use that. So that could be pretty interesting how they if they utilize it well. The other storylines, you got Julian still hating Barry. Barry's trying to get through to him. He finds out that he doesn't just hate the bad metahumans, he hates all metahumans. And of course, at the end, he finally decides, oh, we can be friends. But even though I've seen that storyline done before, the way that they handle it here is actually very well done. And it's it's unique in its own right. You know, I've seen the whole storyline of this guy doesn't like this guy. But by the end of the episode, something happens that causes this, this guy to like this guy. And sure enough, that's what happens, but it's very interesting how it comes about, because he finds the kid who's running the hologram, and the kid goes to turn, and he takes the shot Well, the Flash steps in, saves the kid's life. And that causes him to think about it, because he nearly just shot a kid, and the Flash is the one that steps in and helps and saves the kid's life, not to save the kid, but also to protect him from having killed a kid, <laughs> you know? So it, it was kind of interesting how they handled that. And on top of that, we do get Julian's background and why he hates metahumans and Barry, because he came from pretty much a rich family. And so his parents were kind of expecting great things of him, but he never was able to live up to that potential. And, you know, they wanted him to be something he didn't want to be, and so he came to America and tried to become a scientist, and as he was reaching the height of his field in science, well, metahuman popped up. And so now he's trying to be the best here, too. And realizing, after hearing the kid's story, realizing that he's pretty much in the same boat as far as the fear of, you know, not being powerful enough. And he even talked about how he kind of envies metahumans at one point because they have the power and he doesn't. So it's nice to get a little bit of background on him, finally understand why he's such a dick. Um, so that was interesting, even if it was a cliche storyline I've seen before. And then the other story that wasn't really resolved was... Well, hang on, before that story, there's also a story about Caitlyn. She, her, her little thing with Killer Frost and slowly becoming Killer Frost. She goes to see her mother, and of course we've got the mother who is just so involved in her work, she doesn't have time for her, her daughter. The thing that makes this work, in my opinion, even though I've seen it before, is because I really, 
I feel like we connected with Caitlyn's character for so long and didn't really get much of her parents' story. So now to see that and to see kind of why Caitlyn is such a good scientist, why she's so focused on her work, because she gets a lot of that from her mother. You know, and the fact that... What's his name? <laughs> I want to say Ronnie? It's been so long since we've... She, she, it's been so long since we've heard his name. I know it, her husband. After all of that happened, it's almost like she's become her mother. So, very interesting the correlation that we see between the two. Especially both of them having lost a husband in the past. It's kind of a sad story, as well as a very interesting one. And we find out more about her powers as well. We find out that <clears throat> the more that she uses them, the more permanent they're going to become. And it feels like the more the Killer Frost side of her is going to take over. So, interesting to see if she's going to become a bad guy this season. If they're going to find a way to help her. The one problem I do have with this, though, is you'd think... I don't know. Like, she she said the reason she went to her mom is because she wanted to try to reconcile some stuff with her. It wasn't about the science. She'd already done all the science. And so, it did help a little bit. But at the same time... You'd think that the first thing she would do is trust her friends with it. You know, that's kind of been her thing in the past is that she always trusted her friends with stuff. And even, she didn't always have a lot of secrets to keep, but it felt like she and Cisco would always talk about things. And while this is a bigger secret than most, it's still something that needs to be discussed. It's something that she knows she can't hide forever. So, I don't know, it's kind of bizarre to me that she's hiding it from the rest of the team, that she's just sort of... Oh, if I don't talk about it, it's not going to be a thing. It's clearly a thing, and it's, but by the time we, we get to the end of the episode, we see that it's sort of taking her over as she freezes the computer that her mother says, don't use your powers anymore. So, I, I don't know, it's kind of frustrating that we're, we're going through the whole liar reveal storyline in this, because it's not needed. Um, and then finally, the last storyline, like I said, that wasn't ended, we see... Joe is talking to the DA, and there's a little bit of hint of relationship there, but it feels like Joe's sort of backing out, like he's scared to get into another relationship after what just happened with Iris' mother. And so we don't really get a resolution there. Like, I, they talked about it, Iris talked to him about it, and then we never see anything else happen there. That was That was it. So, I don't know, it was just kind of weird how that was... It seemed like they were building up to where he would ask her out at the end of this episode, but then that never happened. So, I, I don't know what's going to happen there. Anyway. As far as this episode goes, in general, it was a fairly interesting one. I kind of, I kind of figured out what was going on pretty early on, whenever there's this big monster, fuse boxes are blowing up, there's not a whole lot of damage happening, it's mainly just the fuse boxes blowing. And then the, the monster disappears. And I, instantly I had two ideas. One, it's somebody who can turn into this giant monster and then they turn back into human. And that's why it's disappeared. Two, it's a hologram. And as they started talking about how all of the cameras went out, the fuse boxes were blowing. And on top of that, it was restricted to a 10 block radius or something like that. Like, well, it's clearly a hologram. I mean, that was the first thing that came to mind. So... It was a little bit easy to figure out, and I kind of wish they hadn't gone with the hologram thing because it would have been more fun to watch Barry take on a huge monster. But as it happens, you know, it was an interesting enough story. It did help play into the Julian storyline, so it wasn't a bad episode by any means. It was a little bit predictable, but at the same time, even though a lot of these storylines are predictable and have been done quite a bit, some of them were done in a unique way that made it interesting enough to watch. So it wasn't unbearable. It wasn't like the entire episode I'm going, oh, this is such a cliche. I'm invested enough in these characters that I'm just, I want to know more. I want to see these storylines play out with these characters and see what what could possibly be different. What could they do differently that would be interesting? So I, I like the episode. I easily predicted the episode, but it was still enjoyable, so... Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you like and dislike about this episode? What do you want to see in the future? Let me know. We can talk about it, discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Flash reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.